good day to you and welcome to the second video for the school year today we're going to be looking at the ref essrt again reference table page number four and we're going to be looking at the hr diagram all right hr diagram page number four of the new earth and space science reference table there's a lot of information in this um, table and we're going to piggyback on our last lesson about star circle because that lesson page number five star circle connects a lot with this page number four that we are going to be looking at um, today so we're going to be doing a lot of uh, breaking back that memory and bringing it into this page now this page is going to provide you with a lot of information first of all from the get-go you can see the names of various stars Denab, Rigel, uh, Pulos, uh, Procon, and Cirrus, and then our own star, which is the Sun, and uh, Beta Centauri. So there are different stars that you can get here. So first of all, this page will provide you with the names of various stars. All right. So names of various stars. The next thing that this page will also provide you with is the mass or the size of various stars. So to the right side of this chart, you will see increasing mass. So what that tells you is that at the bottom would be small mass stars or small size of stars. And then all the way on top would be uh, size that are humongous, that are big. So this reference table page would also tell you about the sizes, right? sizes of stars okay next this page would also tell you about the colors of stars so if you look at the bottom on the x-axis it tells you about color so you can see red orange yellow white white blue uh sorry blue white and then blue so this would also tell you about the colors of stars all right then still on the x-axis you have temperature you have surface temperature right there you would notice that temperature is increasing to the left to the left so it's increasing all the way from 3000 all the way to 30,000. notice that the unit for temperature here is in kevin all right k all right so this page will also provide you with temperatures all right temperatures of stars all right what else can this page also um present to you it tells you the spectral class so you have the m k g f a b o something we're going to get to as well so it tells you about the class of stars as well and then to the left side you have luminosity luminosity is another fancy way of saying brightness how bright a star is in comparison to our own star which is the sun so you notice that the luminosity or the brightness of the sun is one. OK, so if a star is not as bright as our sun, it's going to have a number lower than one. If a star is way brighter than our sun, then it will have a higher number such as 10 or 10 to the power of two, which is another way of saying 100. 10 to the power of three is another way of saying 1000. 10 to the power of four is another way of saying 10 thousand and then to the power of five a hundred thousand to the power of six that's one million on and on like that lastly this would also give you an idea the radius of a star so for example our own sun has a radius of if you look at the let's pick a different color for my pen here if you look at our sun right here and you follow that line going all the way you see that it has a solar radius of one so the radius of our sun is one so if any star is bigger than our sun we can say oh it has a radius of two radii or 10 radii or a um, hundred radii so hence if you keep looking you see you have 10 radii and then you have 10 to the power of two which is another way of saying a hundred radii which means that these stars would be a hundred times larger bigger than our sun and then below uh, the line for our sun is 0 0.1 solar radii, radius and then 10 to the power of negative 2 uh, solar radius on and on. This just tells you that these stars are way smaller than our sun. 
All right, so those are the various things we're going to be looking at in this. Let's go forward. Uh, here I provided a color, a more colorful um, idea of the HR diagram. Um, so that is, I think it will bring something home for you when you look at the color version of it. All right. Cool. We're going to get back to this color version in a minute, but I just wanted you to note that to the right here, you have more, um, you have more red to the right. And then in the middle, you have yellow and white and bluish white. And then all the way to the left, you have uh, blue colors. All right. And notice that these uh, blue colors, they are way hotter having a temperature of 3000 Kelvin or higher. And then on the left hand side, where on the right hand side where you have the red, they have a lower color as low as 3000 uh, Kelvin. All right, let's move forward. Now, picking back on our last lesson about star circle, what we're gonna learn here is that we first will learn from that lesson that um, stars, when they are being given birth, so they are formed in a nebula. And then once a star is formed in a nebula and fido a nuclear fusion stars, the stars are emitting light. Now, if that star is an average star, like our sun, it comes out as yellow, all right, or something around white or bluish white. So our sun is right here to the left side of the diagram. And you see that our sun is an average star, all right? an average star if you are to draw that line downward. And then you see that our sun would live for a very long time, living for billions of years, all right? So our sun will live billion because this average star is small. So it's gonna live for billions of years before it will get to the next phase called the giant phase, all right? So every star, once they are born, they move from the main sequence. Main sequence is another way of saying that the star is young. So main sequence simply means the star is young or the star is in its early stage. Okay, so um, all of these stars that you see in the HR diagram in this diagonal fashion here, all of these stars are main sequence stars. So I think that is a major annotation you need to make in your reference table right now. So I'm going to underline the word main sequence is already written in your reference table as well. So below that main sequence, you can just indicate and say early stage, early stage. So which means these stars are young. All right. Now, young stars can be huge. So they can be massive stars or young stars can be average star or young stars can be red dwarf that we talked about in our last lesson as well. So uh, young stars that are red dwarf, you see them all the way at the bottom here. So they are very small in terms of their size. And then um, stars like our sun that are average, you see them in the middle of the main sequence, ranging from yellow to white to bluish white. And then humongous star, massive stars, you see that they are mainly blue in color. And then they are on the upper end of that uh, diagonal of the main sequence. Remember, mass increases upward mass increases upward so you see that the blue guys are way bigger than the yellow and white guys and the yellow and white stars are way bigger than the uh, red dwarf so that is a very important uh, concept that you need to take along so from the main sequence every star will get to the giant phase so if it's an average star it gets to the red giant if it's a um, massive star it gets to the super a red giant, super red giant. All right, so simply put, all these blue stars, as they get older, they would become super giant, super giant. And then all these stars in the middle, like our sun, the yellow, white, and bluish white, they will become just red giant, just red giant, and mere giant, all right? While the blue ones are super giant. Understand the difference giant and super giant but notice that both of them are becoming redder both of them are moving on the red on the right side of the chart which means they're getting redder and then all red stars are generally cooler all red stars are generally cooler ranging in temperatures from 6000 kelvin to 3000 kelvin and below that so which means our stars 
get older into their giant phases, they become redder and then they become cooler as well in temperature. But notice that they are getting bigger in size, bigger in size. Very important. Okay, so let's continue. Now, a red giant would explode and then die, and then you have the white dwarf. So, those white dwarf are the guys that you see right here in your reference table. The white dwarf that's the last um, set. However, for super giant, they go through the explosion called supernova, something we looked at in our last lesson the supernova. And from that supernova, they become a neutron star or they become um, black holes, all right? So you see that from this uh, red supergiant phase, they become something else that this, this diagram is not showing to us right now. So that is also another important concept that you need to take away. So this is how uh, page number five connects to page number four. All right, so let's move forward and wrap this lesson. So your reference table looks more black and white like this. So in addition to everything that we uh, that we have discussed, I want you to also pay attention to the uh, the spectral class. All right, M K G F A B O. You notice that the O are generally the blue stars and they are uh, bigger in size. And then you notice that the A and F and G are more relating to stars that are average, and then uh, K and M relates more to the red dwarf. Also pay attention to the lifespan of each star. You see that the smaller stars here can live, can have a lifetime of 10 to the power of 11 billion years. And then you can see that uh, our sun or the average stars have a lifetime of 10 to the power of nine. And then you can see that the uh, blue massive stars have a lifetime of 10 to the power of seven. So simply put, the smaller the star, the longer they can live, All right? And then the more bigger the star, the shorter they would live. Then we also mention on how you can use the solar radius to tell the size of the star. And then we also mentioned how you can use luminosity to also measure uh, how bright the star is. So pretty much we've hinted on um, everything as a, as a guide, but also take note of the names of the stars that are being given in those reference table pages. Okay, so all of that said, we are left with just this page number four of the earth science reference table. So we're gonna walk through some examples of questions and how you can use this reference table page number four. So let's take question here, question number four. According to the graph present, according, the accompanying graph represents the brightness and temperature of stars visible from earth. The question says, which location on the graph best represent a star with average brightness and temperature? So if the temperature is average, it means it has to be between hot and cold, right? So it has to be something in between. And then the brightness is another way of saying luminosity, right? So it should be somewhere in between as well. So around this area would be stars that are average in brightness and average in temperature. That is right around the average size of, um, of stars close to our sun. So our answer here definitely should be B, all right? Um, a are white dwarfs. White dwarfs are very hot, right? Uh, option C would have been wrong because option C are very luminous. They are very bright, way too bright and very big as well. Option D would have been wrong as well because uh, temperatures for D will be very cool. We are looking for average temperature. So our answer remains uh, B. Question number two, which star is cooler and many times brighter than Earth's sun? So we're looking for a star that is cooler and brighter than Earth's sun. Let's, we're gonna eliminate here. Uh, let's start with the first one, Bernard star. Bernard star is right around here. Is Bernard star cooler than uh, the sun? Our sun is right here. Our sun have an average temperature of about 6,000 Kelvin. So Bernard star is definitely cooler. Is it brighter? No, 
Venus star is not bright at all. Uh, Venus star is 10 to the power of negative two, so it's not as bright. So uh, Venus star is out. Better glues, option B. Better glues, let's look for that. Um, better glues, better glues, where are you? Better glues, better, better glues is right here. So is better glues cooler? Yes, because better glue is on this other side. So it's cooler. Is it bigger or brighter? Yes, it's definitely bigger and brighter. So I'll definitely take that as my answer. But let's double check if the other options are correct or wrong. Uh, Rigel. Rigel is right here. Rigel is not cooler. Rigel is hotter. Rigel has a temperature of about 10,000. So Rigel is out. Uh, Cyrus. Cyrus is also hotter as well. It's hotter than our sun. So that is out. Easy reason. Um, option number three, which star, which star color indicates the hottest star surface temperature? Mm, hottest star temperature. Uh, blue, definitely, because blue represents uh, 30,000 Kelvin. So these blue stars, these big stars are the hottest. So my answer would be A here. White is average, yellow is average, our sun is yellow, our sun is average. Red, red are red dwarf, they are the coolest temperature. So they are on the right side of the HR diagram with a very low temperature. So our answer remains um, blue. Question number four, compare the temperature and luminosity of the star Polaris. Uh, Polaris. Let me read that again. Compared to the temperature and luminosity of the star Polaris, the star Sirius is. So we are comparing Sirius and we are comparing that to Polaris. Now, where is Polaris? It takes a while for you to get used to the names and their position. Polaris is right around here. So I can see that Polaris is bigger in terms of luminosity. All right. And Polaris is also cooler in terms of temperature. So that means the star Sirius is less luminous and hotter. So cooler will be out of the way. Cooler will be out of the way. Hotter and more luminous? No, that will be out of the way. Our answer will be B, hotter and less luminous. Last question. Um, compared to other group of stars, the group that has relative low luminosities and relatively low temperature is the i don't even need a reference table for this is a red dwarf yeah the red dwarf has the lowest luminosity because they are right around here so their luminosity is very low and also their temperatures are also very low so white dwarf is out of the way red giant is out of the way because red giants are very 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 luminous so blue super giants they are way too hot so they are definitely not low temperature. So our answer is red dwarf. That is how you use this Earth Science Reference Table page number four. All right, bye for now.